birthday. I just accidentally started the engine. <laughs> so, ergo my laughter. Um, but um, everything is fine. Just Ben Simon's probably having a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. This is the um, this is what I want to show. I was trying to stop the voice. I'm hearing myself down here. Ah, there we go. Great. <laughs> so, happy Tuesday, everybody. Uh, welcome to another Tuesday of Chess and Psychology. Um, today, I kind of want to show you some dynamic games. <laughs> that was a great start. I'm never going to cut my hair. Are you kidding me? No, 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 no. This is my secret to warmth. But um, yeah, so I want to show you some nice games in dynamic chess. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to start with a game that Bronstein played in 1956, yes. <laughs> and uh, follow up with hopefully uh, one or two of Topolov games. So that, those are some of my favorite um, cool dynamic game. I got the idea of talking about dynamics because when in camps I'm talking about so who can tell me like uh, what's the difference between like a dynamic game and like a strategy game. Like they all have the idea that dynamic is, should be like faster, more uh, like just higher pace, just like a lot of different, um, well dynamic is much different from strategy, strategic game. So um, just like the, how to have the balance, how to convert it, stuff like this is something that a lot of players struggle with. So um, yeah, okay, so I want to try my best and show you some dynamic games. So without much talk, let's just start. So this game is the game that Bronstein played. Uh, I do not know the opponents, but uh, black was um, Roja. Roja. I I do not. Um, unfortunately, I don't know this player. I wish I did, but before my time. So now we got what you Americans know as fried liver attack. But I grew up knowing this as just a the just don't do this attack. But <laughs> as black, just to be careful just like a trick. I didn't really know the name for it, but um, you Americans know the names, which is kind of cool. Fried liver, why not? So um, I have had the experience of this, this position from black side um, many years ago, but my opponents usually always just went for this bishop b5. Nobody really played this d3. So what are your thoughts uh, on d3? What do you think should be, do you think, um, this changes anything for the black? Are we gonna take on c4? Are we not gonna take on c4? I'd highly doubt anybody will want to take knight to d5 right now, either. But so yeah, just let me know what you think about this. Uh, Stefan, I think you need. It would be better if you word it a little bit better. I don't understand that because, but um, yeah, I kind of I'm kind of used to Bishop B5, seeing Bishop B5 too. So H6 is actually a little bit more interesting, just because now you kind of kick this knight away, and now you can actually consider taking back on D5. However, here Black played E4. And it's my understanding that e4 is um, kind of interesting, but not something that I would do honestly as black. I'm more inclined to like taking first and then doing e4, or taking on d5, but then taking on d5 has its issues with taking on e5, or like take takes like something with c4, it's just like stuff like that is not gonna be as pleasant. So, having said that, e4, my question to you guys. Shall we take this pawn? Are we gonna take d takes e4 or else ignore it? What do you think we should do? Something we could consider is queen e2. So, 
this has like a f kind of an interesting background. Um, like, so from what I know from this game, uh, Bronstein wanted to do the sacrifice. So mm, I'm sure you guys uh, know how big Paul Morphy is, what well, was, but how, how much impact he has in our uh, today's chess and like the history and everything that he did for today's chess. Um, and so what I kind of wanted to talk about was in this game, Bronstein kept thinking, so what would Paul Murphy do if he was white after e4? Would he sacrifice it? Because uh, especially last week on the chess and psychology, we went over some of the Murphy's games, the knightless games that he was putting like his b1 knight off the board. Go off the board. There we go. Nope. All right, well, this knight doesn't want to go. Ah, there we go. Now my knight's off the board. He would have this like games that he was playing with from first move. Thank you. Without knight. And uh, I thought that was quite interesting. So now in this game, Bernstein is thinking to himself, uh, actually thought to himself, <laughs> um, that so what would Morphe do? Would he take here and sacrifice this, this bishop? Or would he just go on queen e2? I agree. It kind of depends on what his opponent's rating. Today, I would definitely that would be definitely one of my considerations. However, um, that in this was a uh, this was a game that was happening in the Olympiad. And Olympiads are teams, right? right? So you need to um, you need to you need to think of the, the good of the team, not just yourself. I agree. Morphe would most likely take. However, um, Bronstein in this position asked permission from his team to sacrifice. I don't know. I don't know the rule back then, but this is something that was kind of big. That like he actually asked permission to do like a sacrifice. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, getting a permission to sacrifice. But I guess this is just um, how this kind of shows like how awesome. I want. I don't want to say awesome. How uh, united. The Soviet players back in the 50s were. So, yeah, it was really interesting to me to like, so that he had, the, he got permission. But yeah, so I guess they permitted him <laughs> to do this take, of course. And now, what, how do you think we should follow? We probably should do something fast because now this is a dynamic position. We gotta be able to actually use this position otherwise we are going to suffer uh, suffer seriously because well we just gave up the we just gave up the 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 bishop right so queen e2 is possible queen e2 was possible i agree but um i think this is this is more interesting and kind of that's why we're looking at it. probably if queen e2 we wouldn't be spending so much time looking at it right so um, c3, e5, so e, um, e5 takes on d5, so in the game, uh, white went queen d4. So the idea with queen d4 is kind of interesting, the idea is, well, I'm centralizing my queen, I'm attacking your knight, um, I'm taking away your pot potential bishop c5s, so I think these are some of the interesting things that was considered during the game. And yeah, so in the game, uh, black just went knight b6, but the better was knight d6, actually. If you played e5, then there's knight f5. And then um, the pawn is also hanging, so this e5 is a wrong move. However, um, I think knight d6, knight c3, this is still pretty interesting uh, position for white, but knight d6 is just a little bit better compared to knight b6 because after knight b6 we are not forced to play knight c3 and so we have move c4 all right so what do you think will happen after c4 uh does anybody actually want to be white anybody want to be black let's try to take like a quick um vote hello guys how's it going I'm kind of happy to be back in the chess club for the time being. I was going a little, um, was getting a little repetitive from my room, then to the library, room, library, room, library. So, 
I'm actually going to the library after here. But yeah, I, I do prefer white too. Just spatial wise, this is awesome. Um, and it's not just one pawn, we have two pawns in exchange for a knight. So yeah, I like c4. So c6 seems to be the best move because you gotta try and attack the center. However, uh, in the game, black played c5. Now, what do you think we should do? Should we, should we do this en passant? Should we ignore? Should, uh, basically, we have two choices. Either en passant or move the queen um, somewhere else. Which one do you think is better? Yeah, we shouldn't on Passan, we shouldn't trade queens. Exactly. Good. So we should just retrieve the queen. Uh, queen d3 seems to be the, the best position because you don't, I mean, your queen is um, def defending your pawns and it's just right behind the structure and you can start considering something with e5s as well. Knight c3, e5, those looks pretty good, right? In the game, black played bishop g4. Now, I want you guys to try and give me like a brief overview of what you're going to do with your pieces. So <clears throat> what are you going to do with this knight? What are you going to do with your king, this bishop? Just where do you think they belong? And ideally a move order, like, um, but not necessarily. So I basically just want you to tell me where your pieces should be. I think, yeah, knight probably should be on somewhere most likely d2. But then what if the knight is on d2, then what are you going to do with your bishop? That's the thing. If you play knight c3, can't he just take it? If you take with the queen, then he can try to take over here. And if you take with the pawn, you kind of mess up with your pawn structure. So I think um, having understood that, you're going to most likely choose knight d2. Even though d2 is not the, the most ideal position, that's the position that defends f3. So we're going to go for knight d2. Um, and so after knight d2, black actually played bishop e7. Now, I think castling is not something that it's too hard for us to see. Castling seems pretty doable. Castle and um, now, why to move? What to do? I would want to free this bishop, but is it uh, should we like try to free it from f4? Should we try with b3s? I think considering b3 is very reasonable. However, what about this knight? What are you gonna do with this knight? So I see an idea with h3. So if you're trying to kick that bishop away, you don't have to do it with h3. You can do it with knight e5. What do you guys think about that? OK. Um, yeah, I think you guys are catching up that uh, knight e5 is like a better version of playing h3 and yes I definitely agree knight e5 this little guy is going crazy over here and uh, after knight e5 mm, well we don't necessarily intend to take on g4 but we intend so a lot of the th lots of the dynamic chess is about space, spatial advantage, pieces coordination, um, just trying to form an attack, very simply to put it. Um, in strategy game, we're most often trying to like regroup them, find the right pieces, um, plan long ahead. Usually the pawn structures are quite um, quite determines in the um, in the 
<laughs> strategy games, but in dynamic games, it's not, that's not completely true. We have like a mobile center, mobile pawns. So, yeah. Uh, in the game, black just played bishop h5. Now, the, we have mentioned this idea with b3, so let's go ahead and do it. Um, black played knight d7, so now, my question to you again, what do you want to do with this knight? You do have a few options, you can do something like f4, you can take and try with like e5 maybe, you can play bishop b2, um, you can bring the other knight to f3, so you do have a variety of options, which one do you prefer? So you wanted to bring your knight from d2, g3, f5, that's interesting, but right now the game is not in the king side or the queen side, it's more in the center. So whatever you do should ha be doing something to our center, and because we have sacrificed the knight for two pawns and this dynamic advantage, that's the thing with dynamic advantage, you rarely get the chance to actually play a move like knight d2, rook d, rook e1, knight f1, knight g3, that's going to be way too slow. Dynamic chess is quite fast paced. So knight d7. I'm not the, honestly I'm not the biggest fan of f4. I think it's interesting, but it also has a lot of uh, little issues. Huh, on Passan. Yeah, how can we on Passan the knight? Teach me. D6 takes the. If you play d6, he's just gonna pick up your knight and attack your queen. So careful, guys. I don't think knight f3 is also a good choice, just because knight f3. Um, what if I just take it over here? You have to take back with the knight. And what if I just try to block it over here? Trying my best to block. Woof. Um, yeah. So that's why um, here, bishop b2 is just the easiest way. Um, so ideally we want to take this knight, but he's going to take it back with the knight and then play bishop, whoops, doing chess.com, leeches, then do bishop f6. We're not going to have enough time to play this e5. Uh, that is why we shouldn't take, we should just go for bishop b2. And after bishop b2, um, in the game, take, take knight d7. So now. We got to the say, a similar position that uh, we were just looking at, attacking our bishop. What to do? We could bring the bishop back. We could try something with maybe f4. We could try something with, uh, I guess those are your two valid choices. Got it. Oh, you got it? I got it. Ah, uh, that fly was really beginning to frustrate me. I don't think the f4 is a good idea. Sorry, guys. Uh, queen g3? Uh -uh. Oh, oh, careful. Bye bye, rook. Exactly, we need this bishop, so we gotta keep it. So when we're keeping this bishop, um. Let's see, what else can happen? Um, bishop c3 is just a little bit more precise because if you play bishop b2 after bishop f6, you have to do something about this bishop again and you would be losing a tempo. Um, whoops. You could play like rook b1, you could play like queen c2, you could move this bishop, whatever you do, you're gonna lose a tempo. So that's why we, uh, Bronstein liked bishop c3. He doesn't want to lose the tempo because the dynamic chess tempos matter way too much to just throw them around. So bishop c3 and um, in the game black went for bishop f6. And now wise to move, I'm going to give you guys about 30 seconds or maybe a minute max to just try and tell me what you think white should do. I would ideally like a like a like a one or two moves like I do this opponent does this then I'll do that something like this
All right. So I see some ideas. I see f4. I see ladder rook c1. I don't approve of taking on f6 because queen takes and then your e5 square is going to be blocked. We don't want the opponent to block that because those pawns are, are, are our <laughs> golden boys. We don't want to lose them. Oh, or golden girls since they're going to become a queen. Um, so um, e5 if it takes, we have a fork. Be careful, e5, if it takes, uh, you go up there, he could just throw in like a check, eat over there, eat over there. That's a possibility, or just eat over there. So we don't really want to give black chance. So we mentioned this in dynamic chess. In this game specifically, um, this position you shouldn't give your opponent's chance to fix his position. So you should uh, play it quite fast. You should um, you shouldn't give your opponent a chance to, to breathe. You should well, yeah. Uh, you shouldn't give your opponent a chance to do something like ninety five to take on c three to like improve his position. So not necessarily eating, but he wants to improve the position. Black needs some space because his pieces are kind of tangled. So black needs to blockage this uh, e pawn. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to give opponent that. So uh, in this position, um, white. What do you guys think about this rookie one? If you were to play something like knight d5, okay. Now I go queen g3. Now I want to do f4, and then I'll do e5, and my rook is ready to support this pawn. I did see suggestions of rookie one earlier, so. I kind of went ahead and just gave you the answer. However, if take, take, and queen f6. Now, what do you think we should do? Exactly, e5. We shouldn't... We shouldn't exchange queens. Queen f5, then what? How are we going to start pushing these guys? Ha, push it, baby. I see somebody has been watching you, sir. So I see a lot of e6 and d6 and just push. But d6 right now doesn't help because he's just going to try to block it with putting something on e6. E6 right now doesn't work because just take, take, and just knight f6, it's, it's premature. Uh, B4, mm, maybe, but B4 not right now. F4, F4 is the way to go, exactly. We want to do this F4, and we want to bring this knight. We want to do this, so we did this F4 to protect our pawn so we can bring this knight, right? So, um, F4, bishop g6. Now, can we still do this knight e4? Is there anything stopping us? After queen f6, why queen is not queen h3? All right, we can. Um, so we can't simply do this um, knight e4, and that is something that knight e4 happened. Yep. However, um, let me go back a little bit to address this question of why not queen h3. It's a good question. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is knight e5, you take though, and I can't really trap your queen anyway. 
Another thing that comes to mind is something with, uh, I want to say queen g5, because if you take the knight, I'll take your knight. Yeah, queen g5. And if you take that, I'll take this. Uh, if you f f4, queen g4. Yeah. All right, so let's go back to the game. e5, queen f5, f4, knight e4. So now, what's the next move? Alright, so I see a lot of different um, ideas. Knight d6, keep in mind if you touch that knight, he is going to put that queen on d3 and want exchange, uh, he wants to exchange queens. So, preferably don't do that. <laughs> uh, preferably simply just try to improve your pieces instead of giving your opponent a chance to do something like um going to d3 right okay so um one thing that we could do is i see a lot of uh e6 and like trying to just push mm. I'm trying to see. I don't think anybody has actually said the correct move. No. What do you think about queen f3? So... I see some yeses, I see some wows. <laughs> um, so, what do you think, like what is the idea? I see a long Persian message. Ah, oh, thank you. That's mm, that's quite personal. Thank you for sharing. Um. So yeah, exactly. You want to play G four, right? Easy peasy. So in order to actually get that G four, um, it is kind of. We want G four. Opponent doesn't want to lose the queen, so probably has to do either move the knight or move the bishop. In the game, uh, black played bishop h7 and g4, queen g6, f5, queen goes to b6, and this position, you can already feel the how, how strong this is, like all of these pawns are just making this poor bishop and knight cry, like it's horrible. I wouldn't want to be black. For sake of argument, let's just take a quick look at how this looks from black. Oh boy. That stinks. Okay, yeah, that's horrible. I don't want to look at this position from black. <laughs> um, yeah, white does have a huge amount of space. So after queen b6, um, it's really important to figure out how to continue. This is dynamic attack, exactly. So we, sh we, we shouldn't rush it. If we rush with like e6, it's just, it's not gonna end very well. There's knight e5s as well. Now e now, I was gonna think. Yeah, knight e5 is kind of starts to block it. 
or 195 right now. So my point is um, you shouldn't rush it. So exactly, queen g3. Thank you, Nikat. And after um, after queen g3, we have different ideas. We might want to do f6, we might want to do e6. I'm a bigger fan of f6, to be honest. So black got to play f6 to stop us, right? Now, why to move, what to do? Are we going to take that or are we going to play e6? I think either way, this bishop is it's just like looking way too sad. So, I see a lot of e6. Yep, you guys are correct. e6 is the best way. And after e6, uh, black just played knight e5. However, this knight e5 is not the same as knight e5 with the pawn being on e4. So now, white to move. How are we going to win? You can obviously see we have advantage, but converting the advantage to full point is something that needs expertise. And that's why we're here. We're trying to figure out how to do this conversion of advantage to full point. Um, no, d6 is still too early. So, hold on, let's take a, let's take a, oh, you're correct, Matty. Uh, let's take a second and just look over this position. So, we are doing pretty cool in the center. We're doing all right in the king side, but we could improve the king side, right? There we go. All right, so... Um, after playing this h4, our idea is clear. We want to play this g5, probably g6 to eat the bishop. So black just went king h8. And he, okay, so black is really just struggling. Uh, there isn't like a single thing that is wrong with d6. It's just not the most accurate way. The most accurate way is this h4 and g5. Because... Um, even psychologically, holding the position and bringing more pressure is way better for you than just um, trying to push pawns. So this, this, the fact that he has to deal with trying to keep the bishop is another um, psychological warfare against uh, black. All right, so now, um, actually white did something pretty chill that <laughs> kind of cracks me up. King is one. It really does crack me up because it's just such a simple move. You want to play simply rook g1, probably take on f6. You just want to do simple stuff. But my point was that if, even if you wanted to do that, why not? Why don't you just do something like this? But anyways, um, king h1, queen d8. Now, um, I guess if we play rook g1, queen e7. But then there's d6, so I don't fully... A follow why he didn't follow up with the rook g1 idea. Um, here, Bonstein just went for g6. Take, take, and you see we already got the bishop back. This is just looking way too good to be true. Exactly, we're kind of showing who's the boss psychologically too. So we started off this game at like move, what was it, 8? Even, I think it was move 8. Uh, we just gave up a piece for two pawns and now we got two pieces back in within within like two three moves so and this is just how the game ends uh, i don't think knight f6 is the only way to win i don't think in a real life game i would play knight f6 i would like to think i would but to me something as simple as can i just play like queen d6 i really like something like queen d6 quite simple very charming i'm just going to try and eat your pawns or something like knight d6, if you take knight f7 check, that's also pretty cool to me. However, Bronstein really wanted boom, boom, bam, bam, and he took on df f6. And, um, okay, this is just, yeah, this is just way too good. 
the thing is if take take ah, take this take and if you take with the rook well the problem is they're at the end rook f8 uh, rook e8 right and if you were to take that with um, the pawn mm, I believe just rook e7 is also super winning I'm bringing g7 and you can't really stop my attack when I do like even if you do something like this I'm still gonna get rook e8 and I'm still gonna win your rook all right, so I saw there was a, a question about move 24, knight d4. Let's just jump to move 24 here. You think knight d4 was better than queen f3. You checked it with the engine, and it says that queen trade is actually good for us because pawns are advanced enough, just a thought. Um, I don't disagree, but I also don't I wouldn't I would not do that in the game so that's why I don't really like to have like an engine open when I'm analyzing the game with you guys because it's um, engine might be able to win that but for human being I want to keep my queen I want to attack I want to be able to do that awesome g4 f5 g5 I want to like push 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 I don't want to exchange queens and just rely on these I want more so that is why I don't think humans would actually want to exchange coins in this position. So yeah. Okay. Um, that is the game that I wanted to show you. Alright. Uh, let's move on to the next game. Mm, give me a second to F11 it. Whoa. Is that the right F11ing? Nope, not that one. Not that one. Wait, where's my game? Give me a second, guys. My game. Oh, I was going backwards. Ha. That explains it. Okay. Um, yeah, I have it. So I think this game between Topolov and Cheperinov. Cheperinov. <coughs> <coughs> well, was great. Um, so, alright, let's go ahead and try to squeeze this game in. So, um, I don't really have much to tell about the opening, it's just normal, I don't think, um, well, since the game was like 12 years ago, opening has updated, but there's nothing wrong with what they are playing. Just a normal, um, I believe started from Grunfeld, could transpose to a lot of other things. But um, I think this is just a very normal opening. We shouldn't worry about it. So in the game, uh, Black made a mistake and played this knight 8 d7. What do you think is, um, why do you think this is a bad move? He is. He is a very strong grandmaster and he's, he's such a nice personality too. He's always smiling. Mm, well, yeah, so the best one was knight c6. But in the game, Chaparinov played knight d7. And um, it's my understanding that knight d7 is not great because of a5, a4, and actually Topalov did this in the game, so not completely, I'm not going to take credit for a4, but uh, a4 is a great uh, move that's just very easy to do, and when you do this a4, you're actually threatening to capture this, like win this piece. So, um, alright, in the game, black had to kind of play a5, and now, what do you think we should do as white? What would be different if this knight was on c6? I'm not playing badly for black. Take it up with Cheperinov. He played this game. Poor guy is going to receive Facebook messages. Yeah, that is true. Knight on b6 might be trapped. And uh, what about this knight? That if this knight was on c6, it would be attacking d4, which would not allow us to play a move like e4. So, question. Can we play e4 now? Uh, 
Uh, AZ, you're not wrong. I would prefer to get a lesson from Magnus too. If you get that, can we share? So yeah, I believe e4 is a cool idea. So after e4, Jeperinov just went for e5. Um, what isn't e5? Yeah, he's gonna do this e5, yep. So after e5, I think simply d5 is the way to go because you don't wanna take this, you don't wanna allow this knight uh, to actually get activated to pose some threats. You want, you want to punish opponents for playing that um, knight d7, ergo d5. And in the game, white went, uh, black went c6. And so what do you think we should do as white? We just saw a very interesting position, including the last game, uh, including how the pawns were just doing awesome. So what now? <laughs> yeah, I I was quite impressed with how the grandmasters are doing this bond cloud. <sighs> yeah, we need like a just a tournament of bond cloud, and as a prize, they would get like the trophy of like a mushroom bond cloud. Anyways, um. <laughs> Somebody's laughing. All right. Um, so, yeah, I kind of want to do castle. I agree. So, in order to do that castle, we got to get some bishops out. But we don't really know what to do with this bishop yet. And also, we don't really want to allow this the opponent to take in his terms. We want, to, we want to do this pawn exchange in our terms. So, what do you think about bishop g5? I kind of really like bishop g5, by the way. Yeah, bishop g5. Now I'm trying to trick you. If you play f6, that is the funeral for this guy. If he plays bishop f6, which he did in the game, now we can do bishop e3. Now there's a nice little hole for us to try and poke around, possibly. Um, so, now, in this position, black just played queen e7. And so my question for you guys. Um, white to move, can we do this, d6? Whoa, no, stop coloring, just want one arrow, there we go. Can we play this, d6? Oh, thank you, Anub. Yep, I, I like d6. Well, the thing is with d6, nobody is really attacking you. So, um, nobody is going to be able to disturb that d6. And the d6 is kind of like putting all of the queen side just in a huge pressure. And I really like that. Pressure is my best friend. So, after d6, queen e6, what do you think black wants? True, if black makes it to the end game, that pawn is going to be very lonely. I agree. So, if it's black to move, um, black could probably want to attack this, right? So, something knight c4. So, let's stop that. I think d6 is only good if you actually go ahead with a move like b3. If you don't do b3 and you're just sitting there like, all right, we are going to wait for potential... Uh, knight c4, you can eat my um, pawns. I, I, yeah. I said that uh, earlier in here when I just mentioned that f6 kind of kills off your bishop. That's why we don't want it. I mean, we want it. That's why black doesn't want it. Black shouldn't do it. And uh, now, b3. In the game, uh, Shaparinov just played bishop g7. 
I don't fully understand bishop g7. I think bishop g7 was to stop something with bishop h6, but I, it doesn't seem like white had the intention of bishop h6 immediately. So I think bishop g7 was just played, so maybe black would play like knight f6. I think that was the only reason. Um, so after bishop g7, what do you guys think we should do? I'll give you two options. h4 or get your bishop out and castle. Exactly. If So there's still some confusions on why we didn't take on c6. It's my understanding that taking on d6, you would give your opponent some chances to get uh, get out. So just if you took, whoa, that's, that's a fun take. If you took, took, then there would be like a bishop a6, then yes, the pawn structure would be a little messed up, but um, there would also, the pressure would be gone. I prefer pressure. All right, h4, exactly. Black went to f5, knight g5. Queen has to go to f6. I mean, could technically go to e8 too, but f6 is the better one. So this game is actually brilliant. This, this move right now is brilliant. So what do you guys think white should do? We already can see that we have a clear advantage in um, spatial advantage in basically all over the board. But is there anything that we can improve? I am reading the comments from this chat. Exactly, you gotta go after the king. So something like h5 could be interesting but my problem is if you play h5 f4 you gotta move the bishop you lose the knight so we can't really touch this just yet so we should right now it takes a lot of understanding to realize that we should just let the the king side be we should just take a break from the king side and improve the queen side so how are we going to improve the queen side bam b4 if he takes it check i'm going to pick that up and I'm attacking your knight. And now black is just paralyzed. You can't touch this knight, you can't touch this knight, you can't touch this bishop. It's horrible. So in the game, Chaperinov didn't take and he played f4. So after f4, we have two options. Bring the bishop back, take that knight. Which one do you think we should do? Keep in mind the spirit of dynamic chess. You shouldn't really give your opponent a chance to have a free move to do whatever he wants. That being said, we gotta take it. So a lot of things are just very fast, very fast, very forceful. So take, take, take. Now, uh, if you were to take back, well, that's, that's a lovely blunder. I'm gonna come here, give you a hello, and eat that guy. So you can't take back. So in the game, Chaperino played knight d7. Now, here, um, we could potentially do something with like knight check and then knight e6, but then we would allow rook takes a5 and this rook would get a little activated. What do you guys think about, what do you guys think is the best move? I see some hellos, hi. You're getting in, in a very interesting position. Yeah, exactly Bruce we gotta push it I don't know if you went this push but we're gonna go with this push yeah uh, a6 is the best move the thing is if you take it well now I'm gonna have a lot of um, well activity first of all second of all I can just do this now this is what I wanted to do but my problem was if I did this in the other position if I did it too early you would take on a5 and now black would have some counterplay, some hopes. We don't want black to have any hopes. So 
uh, that is why we played this a6. And after um, after a6, in the game black played king h8 to avoid the checks. And as white, oh, this is such a great move. So what do you guys think we should do now? This is an amazing move. Surprisingly, you're not pushing forward. Nope, I said we're not pushing forward. Um, no, knight e2 just kind of um, blocks it all. What do you guys think about knight b1? Weird, huh? But the idea is pretty clear. I need to retreat. Honestly, I would not see this in my game. I would not be playing knight b1. If I do knight b1, I, I feel like I need to get checked for extra chess in my brain. But knight b1 is just one of those moves. It's great. I, I know I wouldn't see it. But, well, not to Paulo. Um, so I don't expect you guys to see it, but let's try to understand it. So knight b1, I, I think the idea is that I'm just kind of taking my knight away. So if you take here, I'll take there. Whoa. Ah, way too many arrows. Whoa, whoa. All right, I have arrowed this <laughs> a lot. There's a lot of arrows here, a lot of green arrows. Okay. Um, maybe, yeah, maybe if when I do knight b1, um, they're gonna do like a honorary GM norm mail to me. Yeah, um, so knight d1, black went bishop h6, let's bring the knight back, take, take, and we finally got the seventh rank too. And the funny thing is we, we also have like one more pawn, we're not even sacrificing anything. Um, so after rook c7, take. Voila. And in the game, Shabarinov went with queen f5 to try and pick up another piece. Well, pick up a piece. Pick up the lost, the sacrificed piece that he just did. And um, I don't think that we should really worry about it, especially because we still have this guy. And one thing that I would like to mention is look how we're not even really using these two. So we got to start using them. But we have to be very careful on how. My understanding is that we don't really know what to do with this bishop. And also e4 and queen a5s are coming up. So we got to move this knight. So knight g5. And after knight g5, uh, in the game, black Shepherinov, uh played Bishop g7. So, now, why to move? What do you think we should do? And heads up, the game is going to be over in a few moves. That, that doesn't mean that necessarily you're, you're going to have to like sacrifice a bunch of stuff, but it means that black is really horrible. Oh, I see some new hellos. Muhammad, you might want to stick around for the endgame class which might happen with a little delay because uh, I need to wrap this up. <laughs> exactly, bishop c4, exactly. Easy peasy. Uh, bishop c2, now what should we do in for our queen? Don't you want a castle? Nope, not necessarily. So I think that's also a very common misconception in chess that you, everybody says you have to castle, but that's not true. You have to keep your king safe and you have to get your pieces developed. You cast still to get your king safe and to get your rook out. So if you have, if you can achieve that without castling, and we did one, um, we did one uh, other lesson on chess and psychology, thank you, for um, should we castle. And yeah, I think those are some great games. All right, so queen d5, exactly, we wanna do queen g8. Uh, maybe not right now. Maybe if he makes a mistake, then we do that. But uh, I don't think 
he would be making a mistake soon. Anyways, queen d5, great. Uh, black point is h6, and now rook f7. If you take it, I'll take back, and now this is winning, right? This is just, also this guy is just waiting to be eaten. So in the game, Shepardino played queen c8. I can't even imagine it having this position. Let's just, for the fun of it, let's take a look. Oi, oi. This is horrible. Okay, let's get back to white. All right, that's much better. Um, and so in this position, can somebody tell me one move and then white is just super winning? Actually, white is super winning right now. So somebody asked where is the psychology in this game? Especially in this game, uh, with dynamic chess, you have to have a very strong psychological understanding of chess to do all these pressures. And if, if, the, if the dynamic uh, attack is happening to you, you have to have a very strong mentality, strong psychology understanding to be able to hold your, hold your game. Uh, there were a few instances that black could have done better. So exactly, rook takes g7 is the best one. And here I believe Seperinov resigned because if take, just check. Queen e7 and bye bye rook. And then d7 is also coming up. It's horrible. It's just mate in two or three in anyways. Mate in two, right? Two, not even three. Yeah, so this this is it. And um, this was a very awesome power play. So Topalov did like all of the psychological, dynamics, preparation. He did all of it. And that's kind of why I wanted to show you these games that show you that when I say psychology, and chess, I don't necessarily mean that you have to always sit there, plan little stuff, plan like maneuvers from knight from a1 to like h8. You shouldn't do stuff like that. You should be um, using these psychological understandings of like putting pressure and making your opponent feel quite miserable. Uh, and just all of these things that we've been talking about and uh, use your skills to win the game using psychology not just relaying on it. All right, so I am gonna uh, start the end game class pretty soon. Feel free to join us over there. And yeah, see you soon.